the things that I found very useful. It's you know, it's it's funny because I wrote a book about ecodelics and how important those were um, to my own uh, um, path towards awakening beyond thought. But in a in a way, those are easier to talk about than the, than the thing that also was very powerful for me actually, which was a mainstream media fast that I started going on uh, in early November 2004. Um, I had put an enormous amount of energy into uh, thinking about politics and thinking about the election, and uh, things turned out in a very absurd way from my perspective. And in a way, it was a great gift because something clicked and just said, enough of all that. That is just you know, useless uh, activity you just engaged in. And so uh, I began in 2004 systematically turning off all the media streams mm -hmm. that I was uh, more or less unconsciously, but by which I mean I wasn't aware mm -hmm. uh, of how I was doing it, that I was integrating into my life on a regular basis. You know, that I would listen to the radio at night before I went to sleep. I would watch the television news and so forth, and I began to systematically just eliminate that from, from my cognitive diet. Um, I haven't looked at a newspaper on purpose since 2004. Mm. I haven't, uh, you know, I catch glimpses of the headlines and so forth. Yeah. And it's very interesting because it's analogous to your experience of being beyond thought, where people say, well, you know, how will you know what's going on? You exactly. Know what, I mean? what if you don't know what's going on? It's really amazing. <laughs> you know exactly what is going on because nothing is going That's on. That's right. And you're there for that. <laughs> I'm very much present for the fact that absolutely nothing <laughs> has changed. <laughs> so it's really funny, actually. Yeah, uh, yeah. If, and so what I wanted to suggest is that there's a, a really fantastic practice that you can en engage in, where it's that when people think... I don't have time for practice, um, and I'm frequently guilty of this myself, thinking, oh, I don't have time, you know, I need to sleep, or I need to do this, is that every time they go to throw the media switch, right, so pulling on, oh, I guess people use the remote, you know, because that's how far out of it I am, and you put, turn on the remote, or they, you know, they turn on the radio in their car, or they listen to some something in their ear, Instead of throwing that switch, to throw the internal switch of self-inquiry, to simply ask themselves, who was the one who was about to turn the switch? And what was that person, whoever that was, going to learn about that? Mm -hmm. And it's quite remarkable because you may find that, in fact, you in incorporate, in fact, hours <laughs> of practice in self-inquiry in the course of any given day. And in fact, you could even turn that radio on then, once you've paused to think about who was turning on the radio, and witness the one who was listening to the radio, and witness the uh, responses that the one who was listening to the radio is having. Mm -hmm. So you can turn this media bandwidth, which otherwise fills our mind with, uh, you know, essentially garbage. It makes us want things that we have no need for, obviously, otherwise it wouldn't exist as an industry. Um, it, it makes us focus our awareness on things that have absolutely no impact on the world. I mean, it, it's a ridiculous worldview to think that if you spend even 15 minutes a day wondering about media and current events, that it has anything to do with anything. From a certain perspective, astrology makes more sense. <laughs> <laughs> than paying attention to what the Republicans or the Democrats are doing. So I just want to suggest that as a practice, that whenever you go to throw the media switch, throw the self-inquiry switch. I have found that it feels like I have an enormous amount more time in the day. I'm still busy, but it doesn't feel like I'm buffeted by messages constantly. Yeah, that's a, that's a great practice. That's the nice thing about this, this self-inquiry practice is you don't have to uh, sit in a, in, this, in a room for a long time quietly, it's useful if you can, but if you don't have time to do it, you think you don't have time to do it, you do, but you don't think you have time to do it, then take some triggering event. I mean, you used media access as a, as a great one because it is, you know, for your prayer present for that. But it can be going to the bathroom, it can be getting a cup of tea, it can be answering the phone, it can be answering email. 
pick some kind of triggering event that will prompt you to just take this much time just to ask, who is it that's going to do this? Or where am I? This one right now who wants to get a cup of tea or whatever it is. That's just enough of a, enough break. I mean, the big thing is to not let this stream go 16 hours a day, 17 hours a day, but break it here and there. I mean, Muslims have, have had this, you know, five times a day look to Mecca. I mean, that's a very powerful practice. Whatever you think of their philosophy, the point is you stop your day. A few minutes, you just stop and you focus on yourself, focus on the eternal, focus on the divine. It makes a big, big difference in how your day runs. And it's very, this, this process that we do is very amenable to that. You can do it any place. In fact, it's better done reaching for the media because that's where you're seeing yourself doing an action. You can say, oh, who is doing that? It's very powerful and very accessible. And what's interesting is once we start doing it, maybe not exactly right away, but it seems like right away, you feel something happen mm -hmm. when you do that. If you say, well, who is, who is, who's drinking this tea right now? Who, who's speaking right now? And you just turn your awareness around just a little bit and look and see, actually look and see. Don't just ask, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That you get this feeling and maybe yeah. the feeling is just a release of that other version yeah. of yourself. Yeah. Maybe it's something else. I, I can't say everybody has to find out for themselves, but there is this feeling which, you know, if you could go to it, if there were a drug that delivered that feeling regularly with no side effects over the course of a day, you would be going to it like a, a, a rat in a, a lab maze, yeah. right? I mean, and that is, in fact, what I find happens. You start pausing, asking yourself, who's doing this? And then you do it and you feel like I'm feeling right now. Yeah. The feeling, you say, "Oh, I, I kind of, I think I'll remember to do that again." Yeah. <laughs> well, and the thing, thing people get confused about is they think there's a, well, say, I ask, "Where am I?" and it gets very quiet. It's very still. There's no answer there. I say, "Well, <laughs> duh, that's the answer. The answer is there's nothing there. But that nothing there, if you keep doing as you've been doing it and keep going back to it, the space gets more accessible. It gets larger. It stays longer. It gets sweeter." So you just keep going back again and again and again. We believe each time we go back, and the brain sees that clear space, it says, whoa, who's that? That's really cool. Let's do that. And you give it enough of those spaces, the brain has time to refunctionalize. And it will refunctionalize. It will select a different functional pattern if it gets enough of those data points that it can do the refunctionalizing. That's all you have to do. Just keep asking, watching for that space, looking for something that doesn't have an answer. Where am I? I can't find myself any place. Where am I? I should be. I'm in there talking all day long to myself. I must be here someplace. And you stopped. Anybody got your work. But at least the brain had a break there. You broke your stream of thoughts for the day. And your day, your brain has something to work with now. Say, oh, 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 get that again. I mean, if you work in computer support or technology support of any kind, most of the time, what you go through when you're doing best practices, right? So let's say... Uh, your Wi-Fi modem stops working, and so someone, you know, you, you call up somebody and they say, "Okay, what's the first thing that they tell you to do?" Turn it off. Just turn the damn thing off for a second. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and turn it back on. It goes, "Hey, that yeah, worked." Like, it work. yeah. But like, but no, but we haven't made the next tech. You know, we're this highly technological society. We yeah. should say, "Wow, what incredible grace yeah. that there is in just turning something off, off. Yeah. for a moment and then letting it come back on." Yeah, right? That's right. And so. Uh, that's really my best analogy is that I think I probably went through, you know, 40 years without a significant reboot, you know, right. <laughs> you know, I that's mean, right. and, and so of course it's all this garbage that, that you know, that's makes right. up all this code that accumulates that you need to get rid of, yeah. and, you know, viruses that need to be yeah, buffed out. Exactly. So if you just start doing that a little bit during the day, every right. day, then the day never really becomes a day in a that's very right. interesting that's way. Right. It's like 40 days. Yeah. I mean, you, you do, if you do the reboot 40 times a day, then the whole thing changes. As you say, you have, I call it computer support. Oh, I got an enormous problem, horrendous mess here. He said, what should I do? <laughs> turn it off. <laughs> Sir, what, there is something on just, the computer called just, a switch. Just you turn might... it off. Just turn it off. <laughs> and it comes back up again. <clears throat> yeah. Like you say, you accumulate all kinds of garbage on your machine, and you accumulate all kinds of garbage in this machine. Oh, yeah. 
And so if you can just you stop, not. open up the space, reboot, yeah. then the whole thing gets fresh again. Yeah, and it's beautiful because then <clears throat> what I meant before by saying a day no longer becomes a day is then you experience the day as a almost infinite series of qualitatively distinct moments. Mm -hmm. It's not like you get on this train of, oh, this is a bad day, or, oh, this is a good day. Either one is a problem, because then it all becomes this one thing. Whereas if you have these discrete moments, you feel these qualitative differences throughout the day, and the day feels subjectively, in a good way, like forever. Yeah, you, <laughs> you aren't dragging around something that happened four hours ago. What? When, when, when was that? That was an eon ago. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Because each time you reboot, you stop this stream yeah. of assessing about whatever it was that happened four hours ago that you just can't get out of your mind. You just stop. You just give it a break. It's like, whoa. And oftentimes, not always, oftentimes it will fall away. And then something else will start up for the next period. But each time you break, it's like, I look what we say, it's a bunch of periods that all, all sequence out. Right. So, you know, it, again, one of my misconceptions that I always had is that like, ah, you know, once I start doing this all the time, then bad stuff will stop happening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and of course, that's not the case at all. Right? right. So maybe I open an email and it's work related and I go, Arr! but the point is, then I reboot for just yeah. as, uh, as soon as I start feeling it, I say, oh, who's having this emotion? Mm -hmm. Who's having this feeling? And Maybe I feel it for a little while, mm -hmm. but it goes away much more quickly Absolutely. than where <clears throat> if something would happen in the morning and then it would happen all day long, you know, I'd feel it all day long. I'd be teaching and feeling it while I was teaching. Then I'd come home and I'd talk to my wife about it. Mm -hmm. And maybe the response was adequate or the not response was not, not adequate well, about uh, like I was, I'd been completely uh, wronged in this uh, email. Right, and right. Couldn't, why couldn't she see yeah, that I'd been completely right. wrong? And instead, you know, you just, turn it off and like, okay, there was that moment. And now there's this other moment. Um, yeah. you know, a friend of mine the other day, uh, did something and he, he felt bad about it. And he said, God, you know, it just, it's like, I don't know, you know, how, how can I make that right? And I said, he said, is there a way I can make that right? And I said, yeah, sure. He said, what's that? I said, just let go of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost, no, it, almost nothing improves by <laughs> By aging on, on problems. Yeah. Problems don't get better by aging. You've got to somehow terminate that process. Yeah, you just process. Let, let go of it. Yeah. It's in the past. It hasn't it doesn't even exist anymore. Right. It's no longer real. It's a fantasy about something that may have happened. That's right. Which you can't change. That's why they call it past. Yeah. It is past. Yeah. And you can't go back again. So let go of it. Fortunately. <laughs>